Shoujo Kageki Revue Starlight is one of my favorite animes with gorgeous animation, an enchanting story, and a beautiful soundtrack. Some of you have even noticed my use, more like abuse, of songs from the show's OST in the background of my videos. I've been a fan of Starlight for a little while now, but I never got around to talking about the show. Today, I've decided to walk you guys through one of my favorite fights of the show, the Revue of Solitude, so that we can find out what makes it so great. Revue Starlight is not a very well-known anime, so I'm I'm sure some of you might need a little bit of background info so that you can understand what's going on. The show takes place at Seisho Music Academy, where we follow our nine main students as they train every day to put on the performance of their play, Starlight. At night, though, the girls compete in song and sword fight combined performances called Revues. Whoever knocks their opponent's cape off first and claims position zero wins the Revue, and the winner of all the Revues becomes the top star. The whole show is an allegory for the theater system, and it serves as the author's critique on how this highly competitive system can pit young performers against each other just to get the lead role. It is kind of funny to imagine all of these intense battles and dramatic scenes as just some high school theater girls arguing over who deserves to be Elsa and their school's production of Frozen, but either way, Revy Starlight does a great job of communicating this metaphor in an engaging way. Now, the main cast is pretty large with nine girls to follow throughout the show, but today we're just going to focus on Karen Aijo, Hikari Kagura, and Nana Daiba. The main setup for the show is that Karen and Hikari Hikari are childhood friends who found their love for the theater when they first saw a performance of Starlight together. On that day, they promised they would perform Starlight together as the main characters Flora and Claire. And if you've watched your share of anime, you know how very important promises are to the main characters. At the time of the show, Karin is currently enrolled in Seisho Music Academy with her fellow classmates, while Hikari left for London to join a prestigious performing arts school there. Karin and Hikari live fairly separate lives, and have seemingly forgotten about their promise to each other long ago. But everything changes when Hikari suddenly shows up to Seisha one day and joins the school's review. Then everything changes again when Karin finds out about these reviews and jumps in to save Hikari from being defeated by her classmate Juna. As the Genki girl protagonist, Karin chases after the goal of becoming top star with Hikari with enthusiasm. But she doesn't seem to realize the truth that Hikari knows. Only one person can be the top star. As the show goes on, the two basically bide their time until their inevitable conflict. Like the play Starlight says, as the two main characters Flora and Claire are doomed to be separated in their pursuit of the stars, Karin and Hikari's story must end in tragedy. Our next player in this story, Nana, knows this, but she thinks she's found a way to stop it. When the top star is chosen, they are granted a wish by the giraffe. I know I just said giraffe. Look, a talking giraffe runs these auditions and that's all we know about him, so just go with it. And this wish is powered by the shine of the other girls, basically what motivates them to perform on the stage. Nana's wish in an attempt to protect all of the girls from losing their shine and to keep them from having to go through the pain of change is to repeat her class's performance of Starlight forever. Nana has been continuing this time loop for a long time now and she is the only one aware of it, but it gives her much comfort to know that she'll never have to grow up or say goodbye to any of her friends. When Hikari arrives at Seisho Academy though, it interrupts Nana's time loop. And now Hikari's desire to become the top star with Karin is in direct conflict with Nana's desire to preserve her endless time loop. This conflict reaches its climax in Episode 8 of Revue Starlight. At the beginning of this episode, we learn about Hikari's time at the Royal Academy of Theatrical Actors, and one of the first notable aspects of this is her energetic personality. Throughout the show, Hikari has been fairly cold and reserved, and it's pretty clear something is bothering her, but she's hiding it from everyone else. This flashback shows us just what happened to make Hikari change. Out of her desire to stand on the stage with Karin, Hikari pushes herself harder and harder every day, refusing to give up until she's the best in the school. The giraffe invites her to the auditions, and she becomes enveloped in them, working non-stop to rise up the ranks and even reaching second place by the end. Unfortunately, she still isn't strong enough to beat the top student, and loses her shine as a result. From this point on, Hikari feels cold and lifeless, and she can't remember why she even came to the school in the first place. During a performance, she wonders where her love for the stage went, why she doesn't feel anything standing on the stage, and in the end, she collapses, completely forgetting her line and ruining the show. She had become so engrossed in the competition of the reviews that when she lost, she felt like all she had worked for meant nothing. The top star was the only role left that mattered to her. Hikari searches for the answer to her longing, and she suddenly remembers it, her promise to Karin. Hikari feels terrible for forgetting her promise and confronts the giraffe about regaining her shine. The giraffe is impressed by her resolve, so he sends her to Seisho Music Academy in Japan to see what new results could come from this unexpected turn of events. The curtains fall, 
only to swing open with a blaze of fire, and the review of Solitude begins. Hikari's introduction acts as a callback to her failure at the performance in London, as she drops her dagger to the ground. Still, she fights on for Karin's sake, and the lights shine her iconic star barrette. Meanwhile, Nana enters without an introduction, simply appearing from the shadows and drawing her katana. This silent entrance perfectly captures Nana's goal in this fight, to slip in and remove Hikari without a trace so that everything can return to the way it was. We return to Hikari's home turf as the London set rises onto the stage, and the beautiful music for this scene gets a moment to shine. Hikari and Nana begin their fight with some amazing choreography, but Nana remains eerily calm and comforting throughout this confrontation. She references Hikari's dagger, which used to be a full-length sword, and assures her that she will never let her feel pain like that again. Nana becomes more aggressive as Hikari resists, and flames begin to surround the stage. Nana argues that her time loop is the only way to protect the stage girls. If she makes the choice for Hikari, she will never have to know the pain of losing Karin. We then quickly cut to a review between Karin and Claudine, and Karin reaffirms her resolve to do anything to fulfill her promise with Hikari. Unfortunately, Hikari isn't looking so good in her review. The flames have now fully engulfed the set, and it mirrors the performance from earlier where Hikari lost her shine. As Nana closes in, Hikari tries to raise her arm once again, but she struggles. Hikari reflects on her promise to Karin, and remembers how her desire to perform with Karin is what made her the stage girl she is today. We then learn Hikari's true motivation for participating in the auditions. She wants to protect Karin from losing her shine to the top star. She knows that either Karin will win and steal Hikari's shine from her, or Karin will lose and have her shine taken from her by someone else. But if Hikari wins, she can shoulder the burden of giving the shine to power the top star all on her own, and Karin will never have to know the pain of losing her shine. Still, Nana does not agree with this reasoning and believes she should be the one who gets to decide for everyone else. She remains strangely emotionless and firm, but in a way, it's expected, as Nana has been keeping up appearances around everyone for as long as she has been enacting her plan. Nana strikes Hikari with a particularly hard blow, and it seems like she's down for the count. But in anime fashion, Hikari remembers at this moment Karin's promise that they can reach the top star together, and this reinvigorates her to continue the battle. Hikari has been trying to game the system this whole time, hoping that she can save Karin from a tragic fate and still play by the rules, but Karin wants to change the system outright and find a way for both of them to shine. In the battle, Hikari never seems fully sure that this solution will work, but Karin's optimism is infectious and it gives her the strength to knock Nana back. Suddenly, the lights turn to Hikari's blue. Hikari now holds her dagger high in the air with confidence as the blue lights strike it and imbue it with a new form of magic. As the new dagger shines, the music roars with triumph. Tokyo Tower, the show's symbol for Hikari and Karin's promise, smashes into the ground in an absolutely magnificent scene and unleashes a flood of blue waves onto the stage. The orchestration for this moment is the most beautiful piece of the song, and it gets my heart racing every time I hear it. Hikari and Nana face off on level ground and they charge at each other just as the waves crash over them. Okay, I'm probably not gonna sound very smart and analytical in this section because like, oh, I just love this sequence. You know what? Let me just play it for you. The instrumentals, the vocals, the fighting choreography and animation, the sound design, it's all just so beautiful and magnificent. The concept itself of a sword fight in a rushing tunnel of water is just so cool, and everything came together to create an amazing sequence. The fighting continues to be incredible, and you really feel the weight of these attacks. And all the while, Mimori Suzuko is just flexing on us with her beautiful vocals with no remorse. Hikari completely turns the battle around, ending with this incredible flying attack and sending Nana's coat to the ground. Karin is even able to do the same to Claudine, showing how much she's grown over these auditions, as she can now be arguably the second most talented girl in the school behind Maya. As the piano closes out the piece, Hikari claims position zero, and the curtains close. Unfortunately, it's hard to enjoy this victory when Nana reminds Hikari of the truth everyone's trying to avoid. Starlight is a tragedy. If Hikari continues on this path, she will lose Karin. At the moment, Hikari cannot give Nana a good answer 
answer to this problem. This version of Fly Me to the Star in the end credits has Karin's vocals but Hikari's visuals, and it's a hauntingly solemn ending that contrasts the previously glorious battle. And the story of Revue Starlight continues. But I won't give away the ending just yet. Part of my hopes in making this video is that some of you who may not have known about the show will decide to check it out after seeing this review. Hopefully I was able to do the Revue of Solitude justice and how well made it is. Thank you all for watching, I'll see you next time.